Now that we know a little bit about length and direction, which is angle, we can put them together in a function that's called length direction. Here's the GameMaker documentation for length direction x. There's also one for length direction y. This returns the horizontal x component of the vector determined by the blah blah blah. Sounds complicated, right? All right, well, let's just look at the syntax here. The function is length direction underscore x. It's going to need a length and it's going to need a direction. Now, if you remember, we've actually done something like this before with point distance, that's a length of a vector of a, of a line, and we have point direction, which is the direction of two points. So length is the length away from the point to return and direction is the direction of the point to return. Okay, once again, sounds kind of complicated. So we've got this little drawing here. This is going to be the origin point. Now this could be set anywhere. They've just set it to the center of their sprite. The length of X is this blue line here. And then the direction is where it appears on the circle. That's the angle, if you remember. So this looks about 45 degrees. If this line is zero and this is 90, this is 45. So this dot right here, if we look back at the syntax, is length direction. Well, the x length, I don't know it, so let's just say it's 12. So we'll say it's 12 and the direction is 45 degrees. And y would be the same thing. We would say it's 12 and it's 45 degrees from the zero line. So let's look at some ways we can use this. I've got an object here called Object Length Player. Now there are a few things to know about this object. The create event isn't as important. What matters is the step event, the stuff that's happening all the time. We have some movement code, which is simply if I press left, right, up, and down at a speed of 8, I'll move left, right, up, and down. That's not too complicated. We've covered it before in keyboard functions. Here's something kind of new. I've got a look at mouse code block. And inside, quite simply, here's point direction, if you remember that. That's getting an angle. And the angle is going to be from the x and y, that's the blue dot, the center of this player, to wherever the mouse position is, the x and y of the mouse. Then I store that angle, that direction, into mouse dir as a variable. And whatever that angle is going to be, I'm going to make my image angle that is just the angle of the sprite that's represented for the object. So this will make my guy look at the mouse. Now we'll skip into this thing called a bullet. Now we're not using it as a bullet yet. But if we hop into the end step, we have an orbit. And this orbit looks a little complicated, so we'll go through it step by step. What I'm doing here is if I hold down the mouse left button, I'm going to affect the direction. I've just stored the direction in a variable called D to make it nice and simple. If I press mouse left or mouse right, I'm going to affect that angle by a factor of five. So it'll increase and decrease the angle. It'll, it'll orbit around my player. And then I'm using the mouse wheel, scrolling up and down, to change the radius. That's, that's the point distance. That's how far away the bullet is from the player. And here's how it all gets put together. The bullet's x and the bullet's y are going to always equal the x and y of the player. So if we just left it as that, it would be right in the center of the player because my x and y equals its x and y. But then we're going to add our new function called length direction x. The distance is going to be radius. So we've set that up as a static number, but we're going to affect it with the mouse wheel up and down. So that's the distance from this point. It'll go woo as we scroll up and down. And the direction is d. And if you remember, we're going to affect the direction by holding down left or right. So that'll affect the angle, which We'll make an orbit. So here's what that looks like in action. Okay, so we've got our player, and as you can see, his angle points towards the mouse. Look at that. Those two lines of code I showed you earlier, nice and easy. And I've made it so the keyboard, the arrow keys move the character. Well, we're pretty close to making uh, some sort of a top-down shooter. 
Now, if I make one of these bullets appear, up here we have the length and the direction. Remember, that's in length dir. So I've got it set to 64. This center point is 64 pixels from the player center point. And the direction currently is 5. So if you remember, this line right here is 0. And as we go around counterclockwise in a circle, this is 5 degrees from here. So it's just this little degree. But I can change the length with the scroll wheel. Look at that. So that's changing the first component, the first argument of length direction, which is the length. And using the mouse button left and right, I can orbit around. I'm changing the direction. That's the second argument of length direction. So I hope that helps you understand what the length argument is and what the direction argument is. The length is the distance between two points and the direction is the angle, assuming that this line, imaginary line right here, is the zero angle. Now let's turn that static bullet into a real traveling bullet. I changed up the script a little bit, and under global left pressed, I've got a code block called shoot bullet. So this looks a little complicated. Let's break it down one at a time. I'm creating two offsets, an X and a Y offset. And what this does is it takes the X and Y position of the player and it adds length direction X and Y. So it's going to add 32 pixels as a length and it's going to use the mouse direction as the angle. If you remember back in our step event, mouse direction is an angle that's from the center of the player to wherever the mouse is. So this means that the bullet will be at the center of our player, plus 32 pixels, and at the angle of wherever the mouse is located. So this will create a bullet down here. We'll get to that. But it'll create a bullet that looks like it's going to travel toward wherever the mouse is, which is what you want in a like, top-down shooter. So down here, I've created a variable called bullet. By using var, if you remember, that means that this variable will be forgotten once this script is done. So it frees up some memory. But this is how we're going to use it. Bullet is going to equal instance creation. This is a simple function that we haven't gotten to yet, but it creates an instance of an object. Whenever you create an instance for an object, you get an instance ID. That's what we're going to store in here. It's a unique number that's associated with that very instance of an object and only that instance of an object. So what we're going to do is instance create, and this needs an X and a Y and the object you want to create. Well, the instance of an object. We're going to do it at the offsets. The reason for this is so we create a bullet 32 pixels away from the center of our player because let's say he had a gun. Well, the bullet doesn't start at the guy's head. The bullet would start somewhere over here at the tip of the gun. So you can adjust this number to wherever the tip of your gun is. And then simply, we're creating the bullet. That's the instance. Then we're going to tell the instance ID, this new instance, only this instance we're creating, dot speed is going to be 16. That's how fast it's going to move. It's going to move 16 pixels every step. Now, speed is a built-in variable. This is simply the speed of an object. This is GameMaker doing it for you. It's, it's, it takes a lot of guesswork out of moving an object at a certain speed. The good thing is, unlike horizontal speed and vertical speed, which we haven't talked about, they only go horizontal and vertical. Speed has no direction associated with it. We don't have to read the rest. Why that's important is that we're going to use mouse direction. So we don't want this bullet to have any kind of direction. We just want it to move at a speed and then we're going to tell it the direction somewhere else, which is length, direction, x, and y. As you can see here, bullet's direction, the angle of the bullet, is going to equal mouse direction. Once again, that's where the mouse is relative to the center of the player. Take a while to kind of drink this in because it is a little complicated. 
Length direction itself is not complicated, but the way you can use it can get a little complex. So let's hop back into the game. So we still have our player looking at the mouse, which is based on this angle from the center of the player to wherever the mouse is. And we still can move them around. But now when I click, I create a bullet. Pretty simple. So the bullet is being created at the center point of our player plus 32 pixels. See, there we go, plus 32 pixels. At the angle of whatever angle we have currently for the center of this player to where the mouse is so that it'll follow it as we go around. And that's it. And then it travels at a speed of 16 pixels every step. We created some offsets, which is how far away it'll be created from the center of our player. Then we're telling it to be created at that offset. And then we're just saying, hey, move at a speed of 16, and your angle, which is direction, is going to be the direction of uh, the mouse versus the player, which we set up here. The center of the player to the center of the mouse's position. So now you know how to use point direction in association with length direction. I understand that this is kind of complicated to understand, so I urge you to play around with it yourself. Look in the Game Maker documentation, see what each of these things can do for you, and then make these mini games like this and, and test them out and, and see what, what kind of functions you can put together. Because we, co we combined it point direction, which is hidden inside here, with length direction. So we're combining functions. So play around and see what you can do.